don't need bigger knife. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. We are here once again to entertain you with our silly knife antics and whatnots. Uh, today, I was carrying the uh, Spyderco Brower. Oh, very yeah. nice. Yep, it's a comfy little one. I like kind of kick myself for not grabbing one of those. Sucker. Yep. Yeah, especially after I mentioned that I think it's Flytanium has the uh, titanium slap. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. it's back again. Okay. <laughs> I have. Um, I've heard some, not drama, but I've heard some things about that titanium scale. Fair enough. It, it not matching the same finish. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yep. It's like a stone wash versus a... Uh... You gonna focus? Yeah, like this one's fairly stone washed. Huh. Yeah. Well, on the uh, Spyderco note, I might as well go next. I'm carrying a mm -hmm. Technum too. Very similar to a Brower, um, yeah, we'll but not a Brower because it's fancy, fancy. <laughs> yeah, so very cool. Very nice. I uh, I'm carrying something a little new and a little old. <laughs> Kershaw Gadsden today. I uh, this thing's pretty cool. It's a uh, it's it's a Kershaw's attempt at a traditional, uh, a trapper pattern or a sow soap. Is it a sow belly? Sow belly. Sow belly. Yeah. Sow belly. Yeah, yeah. You're a sow belly. Okay, and Not by so. attempt, <laughs> you mean like you know the dozen if time they've made traditional in the last forty plus years. Yeah. Did yeah. you say dozen tips? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the words that came out of my mouth. Yes, but it, sir. But it's been I mean, a while. Sorry, but the correct word is dozen teeth. Tessentinth. <laughs> I don't like I don't that. Like right. that. I don't He's like right. that at all. And on that note, I'm also carrying a uh, Gadsden or Gadsden. 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 Because, uh, because all y'all are like a bunch a of snow bellies. <laughs> nope, it's like a knife, but twice. Uh, what's going on, Ben? Zinx, how's it going tonight, guys? Good what are y'all carrying? Ready. Yeah. How's it going over there, Joe? <laughs> Pretty good. Hey, look, look. Hey, look, there's a Joe. <laughs> His CIA spy was trying to escape there in the back cage. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an American. He's British, if anything. He's <laughs> got an accent, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's classy. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a whole review. It, it is a whole review. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I hate that pun more than I hate most things. So, you know, thanks. Uh, Zinx is carrying his Benchmade Mini Infidel, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Infidel! No, no, no. Mini Infidel. You gotta go. Infidel! Like you're... Infidel! Yeah, okay. That's, yeah. Oh. I, don't, I don't agree with anything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to agree with it. You just need to accept it. Uh, ben is running his no-nose pocket knife. Joe may get that reference. Look, I may not look it, but I am half Italian. I get that reference, too. We're on the same page. So there. T take that. <laughs> What's going on, Justin? How you doing tonight? And Darren, the troll of the evening. Hello, sir. What do you How mean, you doing? doing? I think that title's up for grabs. I mean, <laughs> I, I I base it purely on a response that we're going to get to later. Um, Darren's but, definitely in the running for that title, though, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Is it a nightly title? Like, does it have to be re-earned every evening? I mean, it's obviously a fight for first between him and Mr. Fisk. Well, clearly. It's like I don't a know. King of the Hill sort of battle. Are you trying to egg Justin on? He's like, what am I, chopped liver? Like, third place? Yeah. I know I know. Zix doesn't smart ass every once in a while, but he's got some clever quips, too. Come on. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah. Being funny doesn't make you a troll, necessarily. Anyway, we're, we're, <laughs> we're tangenting a little. Well, we are so the review doing... of the week is yeah. uh, our viewership. We're going to review them, apparently. <laughs> Brutal. 
<laughs> well, they already know that the average enthusiasm is going to be a five to a seven. So, Dennis, shut the well, hell up. <laughs> <laughs> Might surprise them there. <laughs> yes, a little bit. But yeah, on a serious note, we are actually doing a review tonight on the uh, Spider Co. Spy Opera. Yes. A uh, collaboration between Spider Co. and Lion Steel. Mm -hmm. Made in Italy, M390. Yeah, based off of the uh, Lion Steel Opera. Do you have pictures of the opera ready, Joe? So you can just show people the original form bringing that up right now with the delicious olive wood handle that's not a bad yeah. variation uh zinx is saying in chat in chat that he really wants this knife the spy opera yeah yeah all right you're not darren's, saying, it. darren's also saying wait until we review you guys so uh I oh, figured dude. Did on a weekly basis yeah <laughs> mr fisk says what's up friends and dennis <laughs> Mm-hmm. Evening, Mr. Fisk. Every we got three Every episodes to get into that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess we have a review mm-hmm. about things. So who's up first? I probably shouldn't go first. <laughs> Nigel, you should go first. You were all hidden in secret last week. so Fair enough, fair enough. I'll just... I'll my score up here so I can remember what all I gave it. That's so I will give the warning out at the very start of this that mm, I'm not sure if my review is going to seem a little unfair or not. And that is going to be based off of the fact that I didn't really spend that much time with the knife. So I kind of forgot to do, do the review when I was in the store the other night. So I did by memory yesterday. <laughs> Okay. So it, it might seem harsh, but it, or it might seem really good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I did end up giving this one a 72, a C plus. Um, objectively, straight across the board, except for <laughs> cost versus finish. <laughs> I hate you, Nigel. I hate you. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> But yeah, I gave it all eights for objective, except for uh, fit and finish versus the cost. I gave that a nine. It's pretty damn clean. Um, I really like the rounding that they did on the back spine and like the uh, the uh, backlock spring or backlock lever and stuff like that. I got a picture. Um, of that here. Yeah. yeah, the micarta is really nicely finished. Didn't really find any frayed edges or anything like that. Uh, for a back lock, the lock up and actuation was, was, was really smooth. Um, ergonomic execution, and all that. Yeah, it's really nice knife. Um, I'm saying them a lot. Personally, that's where I might have been a little harsher on it just because of what I mentioned earlier. Um, pocket ergonomics, I gave it a five because it's a right hand only. Uh, does fit comfortably in the pocket and tucks away very nicely, but being a lefty and have it right hand only, I can only top out at a five for that. Uh, ergonomic preference, it's a little small for me, and with the uh, hump for the hole in it, I much prefer the look of the original Opera from Lion Steel rather than the Spyderco version of it. And enthusiasm, I gave it a six because... Yeah, it's really, really nice. If it came in at a, like, if got a chance for it at a really awesome score, I would probably take it because M390 and the Mike Carter, it's a nice co- combo for sure. Yeah. All yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some things. There's some things there for sure. My um, feelings are hurt in a number of ways, my but only on the not. side. Oh, okay. Oh, and, and before we move on to someone else, as far as the aesthetics go, I do find it a little short. It seems a little awkward. Like, stand. Yeah. And I do much prefer 
it in the uh, Gail Bradley f- version of that sort of design <laughs> and layout because <laughs> I do find them very similar. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and we do actually have examples of both a GB1 and a GB2. Yeah. Sure um, wait a second. There it is. There's, there's, and, and wait, wait. This is a perfect uh, mention for the fact that Fisk just scored a GB2 again. Nice. Yes. He's back in the family. He's got a holy knife. Excellent. And it's definitely more in the uh, blade shape rather than the handle that I find the similarities. But right. in general, right. they are definitely similar. Yeah, very yeah, much. Very similar blade shape. That mm-hmm. right there type of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and I think more so on the one than the two. I think yeah. the two got yes. spear pointy. They ended yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have as the much sword. of it. Yeah, it doesn't have the dip down from the hole. It goes more straight. There haven't been a ton happy, of... Happy, sad, happy... No, I'm not <laughs> cheerful! No! What's the matter, you no cheerful? No! What's the matter, you no <laughs> <laughs> There haven't been a ton of spider codes that have been doing like the really intense Cobra Hood that they used to do. Um, like the PM2 is now, they're pretty much like, hump, gentle slope to the tip. But this is Indeed. weird. It is a weird looking blade. Um, I'll go next because I sure. think I probably should. I think I probably should. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> all right, gentlemen, get ready to rumble. Yeah, no. I gave this thing a 69. Jesus. Nice. Which is a solid C. Wow, bud. <laughs> yep. <Ooh>. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do this thing. Yeah. Uh, so you'll notice objectively, no complaints. Oh, yep. except for the fact that I'm losing the camera. I'm back <laughs> on the camera. You're back. We're good. Yeah. Let's pretend like nothing happened. Okay. Um, <laughs> what are you talking about? So, so uh, very similar to Nigel, fit and finish, you can't see anything wrong. My card, especially, hard to get right with that kind of rounding, and they did a banging job on that. Mm-hmm. Um, materials, M390 and Micarta from Italy. Uh, the only thing that's keeping this price down, and I think Paul will probably talk about it as well, is the fact that it's being made in Italy. Um, so oh. fantastic price point for a Spider Co. with this exclusive of a steel. They charge $300 for S30B still with fake carbon fiber. Yep. So, uh, yeah, yep. let's let's dive into that. Um, ergonomic <laughs> execution. Uh, I gave it an 8. I think overall it'll be good for the handle for the most part. Um, but anyone with a large or an XL hand, that Cobra Hood pushes your handle back a little bit and there's something lacking back here a little. Uh, like, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't I don't want to lack that. it back there. You don't <laughs> want to be lacking back here, right? No. Nope. So, yeah. Um, lock up and actuation. I gave it an eight overall. Pretty smooth for the lock up. But I had someone ask me, how can a lock back be so smooth? I'm like, maybe because it's weak. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what the strength on that lock back is before it gives out. But it doesn't seem like it has much pressure compared to a Delica a native or whatever type of thing. The siren is the only thing I can think of recently that kicks the crap out of uh, any lockback I've played with recently. So I've, I've got comments only on the construction. I'm sure you will. I'm, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, okay. So personal side of things. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with my bullet point form on material choice, because again, Micarta M390, rounded spines, Italian made, wire clips, bing, bang, boom, give it a nine. Like for sure. <laughs> Aesthetically, ew, it's gross. Ew, <laughs> ew. <laughs> Unlocking the shop at, uh, at nine o'clock in the morning, getting ready for work. And uh, I walk past the counter before even turning off the alarm. I had not seen this knife. Joe put it out on the counter the night before. And I walked up to the counter and the first thing I went was, ew, that's gross. (laughs) And walked around (laughs) the corner to take the alarm off and then start my day. And that was my initial impression of that knife. Um, Nigel dabbled. Go ahead, Nigel. Um, How do you feel on the uh, lion steel version without the hole in the straight okay. spine to it yeah the hole the, you can't patent a hole <laughs> <laughs> you can't invent a hole you shouldn't have been invented a hole you should have kept it with a spear point and drilled a hole like a puko like yes. they did with yes and then we like got a proper yes. but lions their spiderco had to get their sticky hands on it Yep. Don't get okay. So that actually leads me up to aesthetics and the being the ooh. They did the lion spy, 
with the hole. Where's my camera? Jesus. I'm not used to this. So <laughs> that's a gross knife. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Schmutzy. So they did it. And when they did the lion spy, they actually didn't wreck it with the lion spy. I think it actually looked pretty good with the hood. I like the lion spy a lot, actually. For yeah. sure. But I can't say the same thing about this. Uh, you were saying it's lopsided. The blade to handle ratio is way off. If you can see that knife closed, that's what it needs to be. Yeah, the lion spy. It's good. But um, yeah, if you see that knife closed, <laughs> That's where that handle needs to be to fit that weird Warren Cliffy hollow ground blade that they have. Mm -hmm. um, but when it's open, you got this much, you got a firefly's worth of blade with a Delica's worth of handle. Like if you remember the firefly, because <laughs> it's reminiscent of that. I sure. remember the firefly. Um, <laughs> Pocketer goes three. It's a right hand only. You get a three. If my Pleroma and my Rhino get a three, this thing gets a three. I'm, I'm sorry. That's the way I work. Yeah. Uh, Ergo's seven. I actually didn't score it that much lower because, again, thinking in a mini Griptilian form or a keychain knife, I try to think about it form appropriately. And yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? I just have to think? respond to Darren and mention that I held off when Dennis mentioned the Firefly, of saying, like, of course I remember the Firefly, I'm a brown coat. <laughs> you know, your coat is kind of a brownish color. It was on sale. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I prefer Cabin in the Woods, but we'll, oh, that was Josh. we'll get on Josh Weodin later. <laughs> so, <laughs> and finally, my enthusiasm on it. Ew, it's gross. Ew, it's gross. <laughs> It's a smoking deal for some awesome materials in a gross package. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting called nerds in the chat right now. And I mean, so what? Nerds for I will the always be proud to call a nerd for like space western shit like that. Firefly was awesome. <laughs> best, best show. All right. I scored my score. Um, I think I. I well, next have... score! Was next. I the most hatery? Uh, maybe because I actually quite like this knife. <laughs> um, I was pretty positive by comparison. I gave this thing a freaking eighty. Um, For the record, we did it in the right order. <laughs> we died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I figured we'd dip down for my score because yeah. yeah, I threw some shade. So on the opposite end of the spectrum, it, it's kind of funny. So far, our objective scores have been pretty much the same. Lots of eights and nines. Uh, nothing really different here. I had nothing I could say that's too different, except for the fact that I was, for me, it's a toss up between an eight and a nine for cost versus fit and finish. I had a couple very small problems. So it's an eight. Um, stuff like the liner and the scale didn't quite perfectly match up, and then it matched up differently on the other side of the knife. So shit like that um, was a little bit strange. Also, small things like the... And I have a picture of this to show off. The backspacer, where the lock bar actually sits in the handle. Oh, that, that didn't... Nope, there, there's a the picture. Too. Yeah, that thing there. I don't know if, if you guys are going to see it. But it's behind your score high. still, I think. Yeah, it, it, there's a bit of a delay. So the lock bar actually has a brushed finish, and the back spacer to the right has a bead blasted finish. The fact that they didn't do a brushed finish on both, I'm not a super huge fan of, just in terms of symmetry. Um, but it's not that... I can that see that, but I do enjoy the fact that the liners are the same as the back spacer, yeah. and then the moving part is a different finish yes. to signify it. And like, I do kind of like that. Yeah, and I, I understand why. And on a mechanical level, too, like, the lock bar is going to be a hardened steel of similar hardness to the blade steel. So it makes sense that they're going to have a similar finish. And the liners and the backspacer, which don't need to be hardened, aren't going to be. So, okay, can I sure. Also, can I also throw out, again, the Spyderco price point on this? Mm. And the fact that it's not seamless all the way through... Maybe if it was seamless, you'd be asking 300 if not 400 yeah. Canadian and there are, dollars. Polar well, bear dollars? I don't know what our dollars are anymore. Well, here's something really cool that they did do, though. They rounded the inside of the hole. And as much as I like a crisp, yeah, 
a crisp, sharp hole for which to bite into your finger and take off bits as you open it. Uh, yeah, that, you th this thing is super comfortable to open using the opening hole. Um, it's just a really nice touch that they did. So, so it gets an eight for that on frit and finish for cost. Um, personal side of things, I actually kind of really like this knife. Um, yeah, it's an ugly some bitch, but it kind of it endears itself to me in that way, given that mm. there's a spider co. So, but, yeah, but we've it, already it, learned. We've already learned that you like the ugly knives. Yeah, it, it's just <laughs> weird looking. Um, yeah, the, that's actually the low point in my personal side of things is aesthetics. It gets a seven. It's like. Yeah, some people are going to find this hideous. I find it hideous. I still like it. Um, it actually feels really good in pocket. The one thing that I, I don't think it's necessarily like a super bad thing, and the Gail Bradley has this as well, but when it's in your pocket, uh, the hole really seems to separate it from the seam of your pocket. Like it kind of pushes it out. It's a little straight. Yeah, on Dennis's knife, it's much more clear. Uh, but that hump kind of does push it away from the side of your pocket. So if you prefer the way, I don't know, like a Sabenza carries where it's nice and nice and tight and just doesn't move around and there's no gappy weird issues, Paul. Uh, <laughs> if you like it nice and tight right up oh, in there. You should. You should <laughs> like it nice and tight. But regardless, um, this knife isn't necessarily a knife that fits in that same category. My enthusiasm is an eight because it's like, what is it, 250 MSRP for M390 on a pretty well done blade on a very comfortable handle. Yeah, the thing's weird looking, but it's kind of <laughs> it, it still feels great in hand for a medium so, to small size knife. So the materials for the price point is the only reason the enthusiasm got a 4. <laughs> that was the one <laughs> saving grace this That's I fair. Had. Yeah, no, I I like Spider this Co, thing. it's a smoking deal for what your the materials that you're getting, yeah. right? Well, from any company, really. I mean, any American company that's doing overseas collaborations, I think it's a, I think it's a good deal. I think it's a well-made knife. I think it cuts well. Um, it, it's it's nice to lock, unlock and you and put in your pocket. It's nice to open and use. Fit and finish is good. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this knife, and I'm pretty sure if I gave like if I gave this knife to a non-knife person, like yeah, that's weird, but wow, this is really well made. Like I could see my dad falling in love with this knife, kind of thing. Your dad's weird like you, though. <laughs> he is. And I think you yes. overestimate how many people look at the details as much as your nerdy ass. Well, I know I know my dad would, and I know a lot. Well, but maybe I'm biased. Maybe my whole family is just biased for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. Anyway, I, I think that if you're a collector and you like, you like this kind of nitpicky shit, you, you'll probably like this knife, maybe even in spite of yourself. Or you could be like Dennis and be like, eh, the materials are good. I'm kind of interested, but barely. Like, there's no interest, no hey, interest hey, in hey. purchasing that knife. You should have scored it a zero if there was no interest. <laughs> no, I, sh I, I shouldn't tell me how to think. score my enthusiasm. <laughs> Only our audience can make mean memes about it. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. All right. So, yeah, there's my justification for the oh, eight. Joe's got a new nickname in chat. The Picky uh -oh. La Pietra. What's that? Picky the the picky, oh, the picky La Pietra. Pietra. Yeah. That's awesome. You're, you're, not, you're not wrong. <laughs> there was a pilot. It didn't go fat past that, but, you know. Thank <laughs> God. It didn't even get a green light. <laughs> no. It barely left the editing room. They were too picky. <laughs> <laughs> too much, too much artistic again? control. Yeah. yeah the, the I'm just going to leave chat. Executive producer couldn't make a decision on font choice. <laughs> for the fucking script <laughs> comic sans is the only right choice for your uh, Paul, pilot joe if you say that again i will end this call and we'll be done <laughs> <laughs> we will be done for the evening out of all the insults coming from anyone <laughs> that's the one anyway okay, so yeah. apparently i'm the only person that likes this knife okay I mean, so I'm the Let's see what Apparently, Joe's not a person, in my opinion, or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Fuck you, Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you sent me two attachments, by the way. Yes. One of them's a photo. It was for Joe. But I sent them to everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't think this photo applies in any way to what we're talking about. No. no th that's for It'll later. come up later. So, Dennis mentioned when he walked into the shop after this thing was put on the shelf and seeing it and being like, 
ew. Um, I walked into the shop, walked past that section, and went, ooh, what's that? Um, <laughs> and then I picked it up and I opened it for the first time, and that was the end of the conversation. Uh, I gave it an 85, um, which is an A-. minus. Paul likes this knife. <laughs> T- tell us and why, Paul. To be fair, on the objective side, it's very similar to the rest of you guys. Um, I think, okay, offers- so here... I think I'm the only person that actually gave Cutting Metal Lady a nine. I think yep. you might be right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone else gave it an eight. Hollow Grind, Spartaco. Yeah, they do good. Uh, it's not. A I've holograph. had GB. It, it's, it's a full slide. It's, it's not flat. a holograph. It's a saber really? grind. Yep. Yeah. That's why I got an eight. Interesting. Interesting. I'm not saying it's not a good cutter. It's pretty thin behind the edge, but it's not a hollow grind. Yeah. Anyway, Paul, let's hear your answer. Um. Yeah, so cost versus materials and fit and finish, I gave it a nine. Um, I had to actually go back and I looked up what I gave the Pluroma for fit and finish, and I gave that one a nine as well, which almost actually knocked this one down to an eight because that knife was so incredibly, insanely nice. Um, but then I remembered that that review was done on Dennis's first knife that showed up that didn't lock up properly. So that's why I got a nine. <laughs> So I feel like this thing would, was a fair point at nine. Um, cutting ability and ergonomic execution, I gave an eight. Um, I think it's going to fit most people that pick it up as far as ergonomic execution. Um, I'm going to keep saying um for the rest of the night. So there. Uh, it has... The club. That's, that's <laughs> us. So technically that's a different thing. But yeah. It's a different thing. <laughs> The way they have the lanyard kind of tucked away at the back of the knife is right in line with your handle. So if your hand is a little bit larger than you want for that knife, it would be pretty easy to add a small little lanyard to it that kind of took up your pinky space. Um, For lockup and actuation, I gave it a nine because of how much I like it. It is the nicest lockback I think that I've ever played with. Um, In so far as the only thing that comes close to it, I think, is actually the siren. Uh, on the personal side of things, the lowest score I gave it was a 7 for pocket ergos, specifically because the hump kind of does push it away from the pocket a bit. Uh, material choice, M390, and micarta. Micarta, you can't give me enough micarta right now. I don't know what it is, but I love the way it looks. You're I'll a like wagon jumper. It's fine. It's fine. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> said you're a wagon jumper. It's fine. It's yeah. My card is the big sexy thing right now. It's been the big sexy it. thing the last five six years. But anyway, Zach Zach from Blade HQ told everyone they should like my card, and now everyone does. Right? So how dare you? Is that how that <laughs> happens? <laughs> oh, Mister Fisk. Now that now that Paul's talking, we can move on. What are y'all carrying? Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Oh, that was mean. <laughs> mm. Uh, I gave the aesthetics an eight. Um, I actually kind of felt bad because I took a point away because of that weird hump that it's got. I don't mind the blade to handle ratio because it seems to me, it, I I view it more like the Fox Tur as far as handle to blade ratio more than kind of an awkward kind of feel. I don't care as much about blade length to handle length symmetry as long as I can get my hand on the knife. Uh, ergonomic preference. I really like the way that thing feels. The rounded spine is right up my alley. I do own a lion steel. I really enjoy those kind of touches. And then for enthusiasm, I gave it a nine because I couldn't give it a 10 because I didn't really remember that this knife existed until it showed up. And I was like, I like that. I like that a lot. To be this fair, kind of had, we're in 2020. It yeah, that's true. That's true. But it kind of had the um, the Brower feel to me, where it's a really nice knife that should get more attention, in my opinion, than it probably will. Yep. That's fair. Do we know what steel the original Opera is using? D2. I would be surprised if it wasn't M390. D2. Isn't that- yeah, yeah. D2. That, that sounds right. D2. Yeah, because yeah, really? yeah. it's a very cost-efficient version. Like it's a cheap lion steel in the world of lion steels. Where do they say? I could have sworn I saw. 
Yeah. D two. I wonder. I, I don't. I don't know if they have other. Oh, other versions. There's an opera Can classic, an opera. I know they've got a lot of different Genesis. handle options, but I can't remember about steel. Yeah, yeah. I'm just flipping so through is, the different tabs now to see what turns this up. This is going to be controversial. Now that I'm actually looking at the uh, the Lion Steel Opera, I actually like the Spy Opera better as as far as it, the way it looks. <laughs> As we've fault. said, <laughs> as we've said many times this week in the store, as we were talking about knives, it's okay to be wrong. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Extremely yeah. wrong. There's something to be said for something that's just fucking hideous that feels great in hand, though. I mean, honestly, yeah, what's that? Spider what's that thing you have from uh, Benchmade, Dennis? Your little mini pocket rocket or whatever the hell that thing is. MPR, and I want the other MPR too. What's it to yeah. you? It's yeah, all I'm saying is ugly knives have a place. I'm carrying a techno tonight. Like, <laughs> but my point with the techno is things without a cobra hood, I like a lot more. And when Nigel brought up his Brower, yeah, and you look at my Sleesh buoy, if you look at a subvert, if you look at a native, my swayback, I agree with you. My PPT is the same so way. Saying, that doesn't count, Joe. That doesn't count. <laughs> there's, exce- there's exceptions to every rule, man. Yeah. Come on. Like, it's, it's, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Although I do agree. Somebody made the comment earlier, Maven Dennis, saying they should have done what they did with the Puko, stick a small hole in the blade. Correct, uh, sir. Dude, mm-hmm. a thousand percent. I would prefer that, but I don't hate the current blade. Dude, if they had done an opera with a compression lock and made it their own... Uh, with a compression lock or something Spyderco esque like yeah. that, but kept the blade shape more true to the proper like drop pointy old mad knife that the opera is. Uh, yeah, like I'll get out my mini binoculars to look at a stage. Like seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Honestly, the only thing that bothers me aesthetically is what Joe touched on about the change in finish between the moving parts and the not moving parts. It's such a small thing, and ultimately... Tiny. Yeah. I wish I had gotten a video of it actually opening and closing. Oh. Because how much that worn cliff actually has to tuck into the back of the handle, it's yeah. like, no, that, that handle literally needs to be that long for that <laughs> length. But when you open it up, you're like, no. No. <laughs> so two, two things... First off, the construction of the of a backlock, um, from my understanding, you can have a small, weaker spring and just not have as much of a detent, but still have a fairly solid lockup because you're mostly relying on that kind of tooth and notch geometry for the actual solidity of the lockup. It's not so much the detent strength that matters. The other thing, how would you feel about this knife? I guess this is an open question for all of you. How would you feel about this knife if they got rid of the Cobra hood and instead uh, they did what they did with, where the hell did it go? My military. Uh, Something like this, where it just continued down to the point. No, because then it's not an opera anymore. Then it's just a military. (laughs) <laughs> a mini, yeah, a mini yeah. mini lockback. I was going to say, are you yeah. just asking for a mini military? No, Is that- no, no, yeah, no, that's no. a PM3 at that point. I would, like. I would, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, no. I would still prefer <laughs> the. I still, I still like the weirdness of this hump, but okay. Well, that answers my question. If it was a either a slope <laughs> or if there was more material leading up towards the tip. But then, yeah, so, it would change how the tip would operate. So sure. I think with this knife in particular, a lot of people are forgetting that the actual belly of this spy opera itself almost identically mimics the original opera. <laughs> yeah. So oh, how yeah. the spine gets there to meet it is something completely different. But if you look at the actual edge side of the Spyderco version as well as the lion steel, that belly is identical. And they mm-hmm. gave the same cutting performance on both knives. They just got there a very different way. Yeah. So, so are you sure that's Saber? That is. That picture. Yeah, it okay. is. Even in the description, it says? Uh, I can double check, but if they're saying it's a hollow ground, they're lying. If they say it's a hollow ground, it's got to be the most shallow hollow ground. Joe knows more than Spider Co. does. 
I, I know, I know, I know more, more than their, I know more than their copywriter. No, <laughs> I corrected you on the Griptilian, sir. Uh, you're still wrong. That is not hollow ground. Uh, <laughs> screw you. They wouldn't put HG on the code if it wasn't. The old ones were hollow ground, and the new ones are not. You argued me on that. Anyway, <laughs> this is all. I still but... have, I still have yet to put a machinist straight edge to see if there is any curvature, because that at that point I would have to concede. But I haven't, ch- I haven't. <laughs> actually... He hasn't done it. Yeah, uh, they they um, don't they don't actually say it. Oh, okay, grind. They say full flat, which is also a lie because it's a saber <laughs> grind. There's a fucking flat right above in the hole. So yes, I know more than Spyderco, no. and so do you. <laughs> but because you can't invent a hole, the hole doesn't count. <laughs> I mean, by that logic. <sighs> The thing that I was going to say about the opera, though, the spy <laughs> opera specifically, is the fact that I want, I want a Gail Bradley, but I don't want a Gail Bradley because I hate the lock on it, and I I'm not huge on lockbacks, but this is the nicest lockback I've ever seen. So this is my option to get a Gail Bradley blade shape <laughs> that I like, with beautiful orange micarta. So fuck you all. It's delightful. Okay, and I will say this: as far as the micarta goes. Pretty, mm-hmm. pretty gorgeous. They did a really pretty job on the micarta. Yeah. Okay. Can I double on something else aesthetically? The three screws in the handle are gross, though, too. Yeah. You that, don't, that was a weird choice for sure. You don't like those little semi custom star shaped screws, hey? I'd be fine if there was two, but the three is just like, really? why? It's okay. Well, odd. yeah. Well, let's take a Isn't look at a the point? original has three. So you really should be mad at. Lion Steel, if you're going to be mad. Oh, I probably am on for them too. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, so this is something else too. The pivot isn't underneath that screw. That screw does not control the pivot. There is no, a pivot screw. No, it's an screw. internal. Yes, so. Yeah. Now, yeah. It, does Two. they do they do the same thing with Spyderco? Uh, what do you mean? For the um, third. Spy Opera? Or yeah, it, I not. can't see the picture because oh. you've got zoomed yeah, in. Yeah, because I was showing yeah. off. the. Yeah, it's three for both. And I imagine the pivot screw is it's internal. internally yeah. as well. Yeah. I haven't disassembled myself to confirm, but when you turn the knife, you can see that, like, obviously you can tell where the pivot point is, let's say on a Sabenza. You can tell that the pivot point is forward yes. on the, uh, yeah. No one loves, uh, you know, tightening up blade play by doing a full con- deconstruction, you know. I mean, you better, you better know that Loctite is necessary, <laughs> Um, if they do it the way that uh, uh, what's it called Civivi's been doing it recently where you take those screws off and the body of the knife is still screwed together oh I'm sure it is I'm sure it is then I don't mind it as, has much, to be. as it, much it has but it, to be. it's still a pain in the ass but on every other knife and me and Joe were talking about making excuses instead of just buying every other knife I can go like this and that's all I need to do Yeah, I 100% agree with you okay um, yeah yeah as long so, as you agree I, with him. <laughs> I do find that it's making excuses for extra uh, whatever, maintenance or whatever, if you do want to tighten it up without Loctite, things like that, right? So My question is, if they do a flat recessed screw that doesn't protrude and they don't leave a pocket, wouldn't that resist your screw backing out? It would, to a degree. By this much? By this much, I don't know. Like it's yeah, it's so I'm, minimal. I'm, I was, it was a question that I asked. That's all. Yeah, I mean, to some degree, yes, I do agree with you that it'll keep the rigidity as far as function goes. You'd probably never have to take that knife handle off and worry about it becoming loose enough that it wouldn't affect blade play or like function or whatever, right? So, um, but uh, it. If anyone's played with a benchmate, they know how finicky they are between play and no play type of thing. It, it could be like a what would and you thankfully, even call that like a twenty second of a turn. <laughs> it's such and, a small. And, and thankfully, Spider Coast tolerances are a lot better than that. So, because I know playing with the pivot screw on Spider Coast, you can make them super smooth to the point where you think there's going to be play and you grab the blade and you're like, no, this is still rock solid. I actually thought I loosened it off too much. And I actually do find that that happens with me on a regular basis when I'm taking apart and cleaning spider coes way more than taking apart and cleaning benchmates. Right. Do they have more threads per inch? Um, no, I just think it's tolerances, dude. 
That's and fine. I like I and I like Tai Chung Spartacos, which is the way to go. Yep. So one hundred percent is the way to go. It's interesting about the Italian ones, and we'll see a year or two years or whatever down the road. You reminded me of a point that you alluded to earlier that I never actually made. Um, we were talking about the price point and the fact that Spider Co. normally this knife would have been three hundred dollars or more Canadian. Yeah, S thirty and fake carbon fiber for three hundred dollars. They're not yeah. afraid to do it with Spider Co. And the thought had come up that that's why Lion Steel had been the one that actually did the manufacturing on it. Um, being that they do most of their knives, or they do a lot of knives in M390 already. They're already bringing in a large amount of M390 into their factory, whereas Spider Co. doesn't use M390 for a lot of things. Well, and getting a special order of steel would increase the cost because you're not bringing in as much, but you get a better deal on larger yeah. orders. So, and you're gonna, not only for the type of steel that they're using, but also for the like the uh, jigs and templates for the handles and stuff like that, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I bet you there's not much alteration. And even machining liners, they've already got CAD programs with those mm -hmm. almost identical liners that wouldn't be hard to tweak to machine that. So that's probably why the cost is is quite a bit lower. Like, and especially when you're looking at like M390, like Lion Steel is not afraid to play with it, the rounded spines, the buying in big doses. Um, yeah, if you put this as a Spyderco by itself knife, Jesus Christ, you'd be looking at $400 of the polar bear, ice bear. I think Ben said ice bear, so we'll go with that He did one. say ice bear. We're not ignoring you guys. We're just so, doing a review. And Bowler is yep. a, uh, is a that's a German company, right? Austrian, Swedish, Austrian. Okay. German. Basically, yeah, it's Austrian. Yeah. Geographically much closer to Italy than... You know, the that's state. also a good point. So, okay, <laughs> okay, but having said that, what's Spyderco's excuse for CPM S30V? Because they have to ship it to Taiwan and then they have to pay to get it shipped back. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, it. Unless you're a, unless you're a PM2, and then you can <laughs> yeah. sell it for sub two hundred dollars. Yeah, that's because as PM2 is a PM2, and that's an entirely different conversation. I think. Well, I'm just talking about materials versus price point and mm. why. Dude, even this today, is so even, smoking, right? Even today, I was mm -hmm. bitching about the fact that on the shelf right now, this knife is like two thirty nine on cutting edge shelf. Uh, the Val Outen is three hundred and nine, and the Val Outen is pricey, and it's S thirty okay. and G ten okay. and stainless steel. Like okay, but Butch passed gun. away, so he like got all artistic and Van Goghy, and now his stuff is worth way more, right? Okay, so... but even when that knife was first introduced, like, it was get expensive. it while you can before it's four hundred dollars. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Cutting edge cutlery co .com. I'm not saying it's not a good knife. Kids. I I I like the Val Outen more than I like this knife, but. I'm more likely to buy the Spy Opera because of the materials and the cost associated, right? Like, but that's I like my the, point. I like the Mini Valoutin as much as I like this knife. So, so... I kind of think it seems like we're <laughs> rambling and drifting off here, and it's about time for the break anyways. Yes, so I'm going to call it here. Oh, my um, shade on the Mini Valoutin was awesome, man. But... What are you talking about? Anyway. <laughs> But before I get to that, I am going to make sure that everyone goes and likes and subscribes and shares, or else you will be cursed to forever have tiny little hangnails that are just too short that you can't do anything with, but they'll always be there and just long enough to catch on things. Oh, dude. Like and subscribe. I hate that. <laughs> That's... That that's, that's worse the than, idea, you know? That's worse than any of my bullshit curses from I just two, want to two say, episodes for the record, ago. No, no, How you, 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 you boiled blood, 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 dude. Yeah, like it's... I want to say, before you actually gave us the curse, there was already somebody that had uh, gave us a thumbs up, and we just got a second one. So, woohoo. The yeah. other, uh, you know, eight of you, you're getting cursed. Well, you are. they thought for a second maybe Joe forgot or Nigel forgot to do a curse and they thought Joe was going to do another one. So one person was just like, like it right now. <laughs> I don't want to go through that again. No one should. No one should have to. Also, well, I think that's what, just what happened to Ben. We got a like out of him for that one because he uh, didn't want his hangnails. Uh, government mm -hmm. mandated. Let's do this yep, thing. So that all being that. We will be back shortly here, everyone. Uh, make sure you go and empty your bladders, refill your drinks in whatever appropriate order, and we shall return shortly with you. <laughs>